Hi, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D Print Creator. This episode will be a follow-up on an earlier episode I did on Rigid Ink Filament. And well, in the earlier episode everything was going wrong, so I wasn't too happy with that filament. But it was too little filament to make a final conclusion and I already dare said that it could have been possible that it was something wrong with the filament. But it could also have been possible that there was something wrong with my settings and I couldn't do any more tests well because I had too little filament and uh, then I contacted Richard Inc and after that I didn't hear anything and so I promised you guys I would buy a roll of filament uh, to make a final test with this filament and then I think it was maybe six or seven weeks later I got an email from Ed Tyson and Ed Tyson is the managing director of Richard Inc. And he was uh, unhappy that I was unhappy with his filament and he said well I want to make good with you. So uh, the thing he did is he let me choose whatever filament I wanted and he gave me a one kilogram spool of it so I could do a new test and he even told me well you don't have to do a review I just want you to be happy with our filaments because that's what our company is, is standing for we think every, every user of our filament has to be very happy with it so he gave me a roll of filament for free he sent it to my house here in the Netherlands and there were some yummy beers as well and also in the box of filament there was this new Ziploc uh, in which you can uh, hold your filament when you're not using it and you can close it so it stays away from moisture and well if I have to, to, to say something I don't like it should be transparent because then I can see what kind of filament is in there but well Forget it. Forget I said it. Because it's the only negative thing you are going to hear in this review. But then I started using the filament and at first I made a tree frog. Uh, well, this should be a tree frog. And I'm looking at the monitor there because then I can see what's going on uh, and what you can see. But as you can see, well, it isn't very nice. Uh, it's far from nice. So this was printed in 230 degrees Celsius at 40 millimeters a second. And I didn't know what was happening. Uh, I looked up the settings again and it says well you have to print between 220 and 240 degrees Celsius because it's a PLA plus. It's more heat resistant and it's stronger than normal PLA. And uh, so as this had to be the right setting so I lowered my speed settings and when I lowered my speed settings I got a little bit better tree frog it was this one and uh, but still there is something here which isn't very nice and I wasn't happy with it so I was thinking to myself I have to tinker this and uh, then I printed some bigger tree frogs uh, I printed this one and because it wasn't very nice and it even has some holes in its head as you can see here like here I said well I print him a brother but the brother had the same problem uh, I must say that this one uh, had a smoother finish here than this one had and the only thing changed was I was going from 230 degrees Celsius to 220 degrees Celsius and uh, both were printed on 25 millimeters a second and uh, on both there was a cooling fan cooling the filament and then I was like well what is wrong why do I have these holes and I couldn't think of the reason why it went wrong and then that Sunday Thomas Santedler he had a show on YouTube uh, I like this guy he, he really is a great youtuber uh, for 3d printing his link is in the description down below and uh, you could ask him a question 
on, uh, well, any question you like on 3D printing. So I asked him, well, do you know what can be wrong here? And he gave me three answers. Uh, the first answer was maybe it's the temperature. The second answer was maybe it's the speed settings. And the third answer was maybe it's uh, the amount of filament oozed out from your nozzle when making bridges, because this is uh, laying a bridge of filament on the infill. And he said, well, maybe that is the problem. So, well, yeah, I had to play with this and see what was going wrong. And one of those three, uh, well, uh, was also what I was thinking, one of those three, it had to be. Then, that Sunday, also, my telephone, uh, I, I dropped it f on the ground and uh, the the... the uh, holster I was carrying it in it broke my my phone was nothing wrong with but, but my holster broke so I printed myself a new phone casing and this casing came out really perfect it was on 215 degrees Celsius uh, it was printed at 40 millimeters a second and everything turned out great except for the bridges as you can see here the bridges they turn out to be very rough not smooth at all and I couldn't believe what I saw I, the, the, everything is very very nice and then only the bridges went wrong what went wrong here uh, I was thinking of, of uh, the amount of filament yeah, pushed out of the nozzle while making the bridges I was thinking of the speed settings while making the bridges but everything I tried and everything I changed nothing happened so I unloaded the filament and I loaded some new PLA filament to print myself a new phone case and then I saw something strange while loading the new yellow normal PLA filament this was the wire of filament coming out of the nozzle while loading it and here I've got my calipers this wire has a thickness of 0.41 millimeters. So this, what's oozing out of the nozzle, is 0.41 millimeters in thickness. Then I took the red PLA plus and I loaded this again and then I measured it and it was 1.1 millimeter so just by oozing it out from my nozzle this was 1.1 millimeter thick while my normal PLA was oozing out at only 0 0.4 millimeters thick and this made me think when I'm printing and the the filament is oozing out of the nozzle and it's it's hitting the print bed or it's it's uh, hitting the the subject you are printing the, the object you are printing then it's sprayed out immediately so when printing this phone case when it was laid down on the print bed the surface was perfect when it was laying down the layers here it was perfect but then when it was hitting nothing then this happened. The moment the filament is bridging is the moment that the filament starts oozing and, and gets very thick. And this is the problem I was having with my tree frogs. This was the problem I was having with my uh, bridges on my phone case. So if I could prevent it from bridging then it must be very good. I printed a new phone case and now I used some support material and take a look on how great this turned out. It really is perfect. So just by using the same settings, again 210 or 215 degrees uh, Celsius for the, the, the nozzle temperature, lower than the temperature they say on their website, and uh, by using some support material this print turned out great. Then I made a new tree frog, but 
this time I completely changed my settings for uh, when the printer is bridging and uh, I couldn't do this in any other slicer than in Simplify 3D and I changed my settings so that it would be uh, printing very thin uh, only 80% uh, of, of uh, uh, material oozing out of the nozzle while printing bridges and also I slowed down my bridges very very much uh, my bridges are now printed at only 10% speed and take a look here this tree frog is really magnificent so the settings for this filament had to change extremely uh, but when you change your settings then this PLA plus is really really strong it's, it's amazingly strong uh, for example, this is a tree frog printed in normal blue PLA. This is the normal PLA I, I always use. Uh, this is Apollo PLA. And well, it, it comes out very, very nice. It's really very smooth and great. But it isn't strong at all. I, here, I, I didn't put any force on it and I just break it. Uh, so this is not very strong PLA. You can break it very easy. This instead is extremely strong. I, I really can apply some forces to it and it won't break. It's, it's really amazingly strong. Also on this phone case, well, here you can see it even better, I can really put some forces to it and it doesn't even deform. It doesn't do a damn thing. This material is extremely, extremely strong compared to normal PLA and even compared to ABS it's extremely strong but the temperature settings well keep them a little bit lower uh, than the settings they say on their website at least for this red maybe for other colors it's different I don't know I only changed uh, I only tested this red um, but now I know how to master it and well I make magnificent objects of it. Uh, this is printed in the spiral phase mode uh, only one layer thick and extremely extremely strong you you really can't break it uh, all the layers are perfectly into each other well it, it's, it's really a great filament uh, one of the best filaments I have ever used now I know how to master it so this is my final conclusion on the Rigid Ink PLA Plus. Uh, it's really one of the strongest and one of the best filaments I have ever used. Uh, I haven't seen any better filament up to yet. Uh, maybe there are, but I haven't seen them. Uh, thanks again at Tyson from Rigid Ink uh, because you were so kind to, to help me with uh, a complete spool so I could do some tests. And uh, I think he deserves it that we are going to visit uh, his web shop to see if you like this filament or not. And, and well, if you buy there, you have to be, you have to decide for yourself. But I think it's one of the best filaments I've ever seen, and I will for sure be a customer now uh, of his filament. Also, Thomas Santadler, uh, he did a test on the normal PLA. And he also says that uh, the normal Rigid Ink PLA is one of the best PLAs he has ever used. Uh, so, well, I think this is really a very, very good brand. They're not cheap. They're uh, pretty expensive even. Uh, but, well, it's one of the best I've seen. And that's my final conclusion for this filament. So thanks again for watching, uh, I really appreciate you watch all these videos and uh, if you liked it, well, please give it a thumbs up. I really need those thumbs up, so it's so somewhere in the corner there and, and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, I, I need to have at least a thousand subscribers, so help me with, uh, with more subscriptions. So subscribe to my channel, then you will know every time I make a new video and it's every week I make a new video and you will be the first to know. Also, if you like to support me, well, there is a link in the description down below where you can buy me a cold drink or you can 
help me with buying new filaments or that kind of things and uh, my t-shirt size if you happen to have uh, a company and you want me to wear your t-shirts well it's xxxl i'm a pretty big person so triple xl that's my t-shirt size thanks again for watching next week there will be another video bye bye